Gonna have to do some improvising as of course is tradition around here. What's up y'all, Theo from Away We Drove here. Yesterday I installed a soft start RV on my air conditioner for my camper over here. And I found the process to be kind of complicated, so I figured I'd create this video to show you my experience and see if it makes it easier for you. Now, if I'm honest, I kind of hate it when to-do videos go through this entire story and tell you five centuries of history just to get to the point. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna do a first part of this video where I just go straight to the soft RV installation and the step-by-step -step of how you're supposed to do it right. Essentially, an illustrative version of the instructions that you can find from Softstar RV directly. So if you already own one or you're already looking into getting one and you just want to have information on how to do it in a clean, kind of streamlined way, just focus on the first part of this video. In the second part of this video, I'll explain in a little bit more detail what the Softstar RV is supposed to do and also how well it's been working for me. So if you don't have a Softstar RV yet or you're not super sure what that is, watch that second part of the video and I'll be a little bit more detailed there. And then in the third part of the video, we're gonna go into the specifics of my installation because there were a lot of little mistakes that I made along the way that I could have saved a lot of time if I had known before. Stick around with me, pick the part of the video you wanna watch or watch the whole thing if you wanna get a primer on the soft start of the installation process from beginning to end. So let's get to it. Let's get started with our step-by-step. -step. While we go through this, keep in mind that this can be a somewhat complex installation. Consider hiring someone to do it if you're unsure. If you do decide to take this on, don't forget you will be working with an electric system and that all usual safety precautions apply. The first step is to make sure you have all the necessary tools. A screwdriver to open the AC cover, most likely with a Phillips head, a socket wrench or equivalent to open any compartment inside the AC, and a wire crimper. You'll be crimping wires around 12 gauge or smaller, so any crimper should do just fine. Then, figure out the brand and model of AC that you have. In some cases, you may need to remove the cover on top of the AC to see the nameplate. With that information, head over to the Softstar RV website and download the applicable diagram. Don't forget to shut off the power to the camper and especially to the AC. You will be dealing with wires that are normally live, so make sure you have everything shut off. Alright, enough of the preparations, let's get our hands dirty. Start by opening the cover to the AC. This is usually a plastic cover held down by at least four screws, generally with a Phillips screw head, but not necessarily. Once you have the cover open, take a moment to examine what you see. Usually, you will see the compressor, which is normally a large metal cylinder connected to some copper tubing. You will also see the fan motor and probably the condenser coil too. Follow the wires leaving the compressor and into the AC case. Usually, these wires will go to a separate box containing the capacitors and PTCR. The run capacitor is easy to identify. It's usually an aluminum can with a bunch of wires connected to it. It should be just a little smaller than a soda can in most ACs. The star capacitor is usually hanging out nearby as well. Be careful as capacitors can store energy. So don't touch one unless you're sure it's discharged. I'll link a video below from an actual AC tech showing you how you can do that. You'll need to find a good place to install the soft star RV. You can install it horizontally or vertically, but don't install it with the wires facing up because that would allow water in. Find a safe spot that won't affect AC operation or block airflow. In my case, the best place was next to the fan motor. Okay, from now on, everything I describe applies only to my Dometic Dual Therm specifically. Your AC will probably be different, so make the appropriate adjustments according to your model and the instructions from Softstar RV. From now on, I'll be referring to wires based on where they come from and their color. For example, the white wire leaving the compressor will be referred to as compressor white. Before anything else, route Softstar Blue soft start black and soft start yellow into the electrical box where the capacitors live. Do not mess with soft start brown and soft start red for now. You'll get back to them later. Have your crimper and the included spade connectors handy as you'll need them for the next steps. Step one is to follow the compressor white to the run capacitor terminal. Then disconnect compressor white from the capacitor and connect compressor white to soft start blue. You will need to crimp the appropriate connector into soft start blue since they come just with strip wires. In my case, compressor white ended in a female spade connector. So I crimped a male spade connector into soft start blue and then connected the two wires. That takes care of soft start blue. Step two is to connect soft start black to the capacitor in the position that compressor white used to connect. 
In other words, you remove compressor white from the capacitor. Now plug soft start black to the capacitor in that same connector. You will of course need to crimp the correct connector onto soft start black. That takes care of soft start black. At this point, you will only have soft start yellow dangling inside the electrical box. So that's what we're going to sort out in steps 3 and 4. Follow compressor red to find the Herm terminal. Right next to where compressor red connects, there should be an available connector. If not, follow the wire next to it, which in my case was red. It should be going to a little barrel shaped device, which is the PTCR. We'll call this wire PTCR red. Disconnect it from the capacitor, as it will no longer be needed. But leave it connected with PTCR. Just tape up the connection you just disconnected from the capacitor and leave it there. Don't remove the wire completely, because if you ever need to reverse this installation, it will be helpful to already have the wire connected at PTCR, in which case you can just reconnect it to the capacitor and you're good to go with the original configuration for your AC. With PTCR red disconnected from the capacitor, now you should have a connector available next to compressor red. Finally, connect soft star yellow to the connector on the capacitor next to compressor red. You'll need to crimp a connector onto soft star yellow, most likely a female spade connector. With soft star yellow connected to the capacitor, you are now all set with the wiring inside the electrical box. Now turn your attention to the compressor. You'll see a plastic cap on top of the compressor with a hex nut holding it in place. Unscrew the nut and remove that plastic cap to expose the compressor connector. Disconnect compressor blue from the compressor. Onto that connector, attach soft star brown. You will need to crimp a female connector onto soft star brown in order to do this. Then, pick compressor blue back up. The end that was connected to the compressor is now dangling around with a free female spade connector. To that end, connect soft star red. Now, tidy up and secure all your wires and put the compressor cap back on. Make sure the wires are clear of any moving parts, especially the motor. Make sure the AC is clean of debris or any forgotten tools. Once you've made sure it's safe to run the AC, it's time to test it. Turn the power to the camper and to the AC back on. Then, turn the AC to fan only on high. Wait for the fan to speed up, then switch to cooling. Set the thermostat to the coolest setting available. According to the instructions, you should see a green light come on within 3 minutes, but mine came on almost immediately. If the AC passes the test, you can shut off the power, tidy everything up and turn the power back on. Then, run the AC at a moderate temperature setting for 30 or so minutes to allow the compressor to cycle a few times. Theo, editing Theo here. I just realized that a lot of you will probably leave this video right now because this is the end of the step by step. So before you go, don't forget to drop a like on this video if it was helpful and to subscribe to our channel. Now, if you're curious to see more about how I feel the Substar RV has been working for us, keep on watching. And if you wanna know the nitty gritty of how this installation went, then watch all the way to part three, which is where I'm gonna cover that. See you there. Okay y'all, so that was our primer on the Substar RV installation process. Just to give you now a little bit more information what the Softstar RV is, in case you're looking to buy one. Effectively what it does is it attempts to reduce the peak in electric consumption right when the compressor of your AC starts. Compressor is the largest component in an air conditioner, in pretty much any air conditioner. And when it kicks in, there's a pretty high load that occurs on your lines. Let's say if you're, if you're already running in a busy area where the voltage is a little low, let's say it's like a really busy RV park and the voltage is a little bit lower than you'd like. When the compressor kicks in, you're gonna see a spike in consumption. The amperage is gonna shoot up and oftentimes what tends to happen is the voltage drops. And then if you're using something like a line protector, you might actually drop below your voltage limit and then it might shut off your RV completely. And other situations that this, this can cause a problem is if you're you know, underwired for, for this for any reason, let's say you're, you're plugged into a standard extension cord as opposed to the actual 30 amp or 50 amp connection that you're supposed to have, like let's say for uh, someone's house or something like that. So there are all kinds of situations where you're essentially electric supply constrained and that's where the Softstar RV is gonna help you. It's not a cheap device. At the time of this video, I paid $300 for it. I do think it's worth it if you're gonna find yourself in electricity constrained situations. Another really good example of that would be if you're running it from a generator, especially if you're looking to buy a generator, 
you might be able to undersize your generator a little bit because you don't have to cover that compressor spike. It's expensive, but it can save you some money, especially if you're just buying a generator. Or in my case, I already had the generator, but it didn't always work very well for the AC. So this is gonna give me peace of mind that I'm not overstraining my generator during that compressor starting peak. In my case, I have found to be really worth it. Unfortunately, I don't have any devices that can measure the kind of quick startup load that you'd see in a compressor, which is the justification for getting a Substar RV in the first place. But what I can say is right now, running in a very supply constrained situation, I'm using a regular, just run of the mill extension cord to connect to my in-laws house over here. In this situation, the voltage is already a little bit low or certainly lower than I'd like. And then when I try to start the AC, forget about it. Automatically, I'm gonna drop below that 104, 105 volt limit, and then surge protection is gonna kick in and it's gonna protect the RV. In my case, I found that with the soft start, that no longer occurs. So it clearly has helped in that process. It's also made the startup a lot quieter. So you have this ramp up as opposed to just the sudden kick. Definitely some benefits there. In my case, because I knew I was gonna be boondocking a lot and so on, I think it was a good purchase. The quality of manufacturing seems to be pretty good. Uh, sturdy device, um, it's specifically filled with resin and so on inside to protect it from issues on the road, which is a very small idea. Of course, it means that you can no longer open it and fix it, but that's, it's pretty standard for most industries where you're gonna have a difficult situation for the electronics to have some kind of resin protection like that. So all in all, seems to be a pretty well engineered, well manufactured product. Um, and then the last thing that I really want to point out about this product is that the customer service seems to be pretty good. Um, I opened the ticket and heard from them in a matter of hours, um, like same day kind of a thing. And then when I replied to their email, again, heard within a matter of hours each time. They were super helpful. Um, they were polite. They seemed to really know what I was talking about. They listened to my concerns. I found a confusing step on their instructions. So I let them know and they said, okay, yeah, we're working on it right away. And they actually are changing the website because of the, that little issue. So they're listening to their customers and they're getting back to, to their customers pretty quickly. There was no reason for them to give me any kind of special treatment. They don't know who I am or anything like that. So all in all, I'm, I'm pretty impressed. I think they did a good job. I think it's an expensive device, but I think it seems to work well for what it's designed to do. The company seems to stand behind it and they'll get back to you if you have any questions along the way. It's the kind of thing where if you need it, I would definitely recommend it. Just think about whether you really need it, um, you know, and, and then go from there. If you're gonna be spending a lot of time in RV parks that are well designed and so on, and maybe you won't need it. Uh, but in my case, I'm talking a lot, I know I was gonna need it. So definitely a device that I recommend. Okay guys, so with that, that's the second part of this video. And now we're gonna go to the third part where I'm gonna show you in detail all the growing pains that I went through installing this thing. So if you made it this far and you're thinking, okay, well, I've been trying to install this thing and I keep having questions or like, I wanna know what kinds of issues I might have to understand the complexity of the installation and decide if I wanna do it myself. Well, this part of the video now is gonna be the most helpful. We're gonna go into the details of how I had to do it. There are a lot of little tricks to the trade. So this is gonna be a longer part if you're not already involved in the process of installation, or if you just, you know, don't wanna really worry about the complexities right now, by this point of the video, you probably know kind of the 80% most important stuff. But if you wanna really see the nitty gritty, keep watching, we're gonna get into that. All right, so I've been up here already and I checked to see what kind of screws held this in place. Turns out it's Phillips head screws for my particular air conditioner. So you're gonna have to look into that for yours. Uh, looks like we have four so screws to deal with here. So that's what I'm gonna do first. Condenser right here. So this is your outdoor section of your air conditioner. We've got a blower here. Then you have a motor. So it looks like this is a two-sided motor. So what this is doing is it's running the blower on the condenser side. On the other side, you're gonna have another blower that's running the evaporator, which is probably inside this case here. One thing to keep in mind as you're working with air conditioners, there's usually gonna be very sharp fins. So those are 
not quite razor sharp, but they are sharp aluminum fin. Be very careful with these. So this is your compressor. This is kind of the heart of the air conditioner. It's pumping the refrigerant around and that's what allows the air conditioner to cool at all. What we can see here is we've got three wires. So red, white, and blue. So we've got the America wires over here going into the compressor. So that will give me some information in terms of what I need to look for in the wiring diagram. All these other wires are motor wires. So we're gonna open this compartment and figure out what's going on on the inside and where the capacitor is. All right, so one of the basic things about working on a roof, bring more tools than you think you're gonna need. You just had to climb deck down, but I got this little tool. So I found this little cover here that probably has all the electrical, which is nice, because then I don't have to work with this part. Because why not? Always nice to put screws under weather stripping. Thanks a lot, the medic. Aha! So by the way, this is all shut off right now. Uh, you never want to trust a capacitor. They can store energy kind of indefinitely, really. So that's one thing you don't want to mess with. So these are three wires for the compressor here. So we got red going to capacitor, white also going to capacitor, and then blue is going straight in. Okay, so the three big components here run capacitor here. That's the big capacitor. Then you have a start capacitor. There's a smaller one over here. And then there's a PTCR right there. All right, never a dull moment. Can't fit this here properly because of the compressor wires, which for some reason, the medic decided to put right in the middle of this space, where this might have gone. Sure, I could try to put it on the side here. That's not ideal because then you're right next to the motor windings. And I don't wanna have more electrical components next to the motor windings. That doesn't sound very wise. So instead what I'm gonna do, drill little holes for this, and undo the, the top of the wires in the compressor and move this hole a few inches to this side. Just enough to fit the Substar RV. Oh, right, so pro tip, take pictures. So I took a bunch of pictures of this setup, exactly how it is right now. So now I can remove these and I know I don't need to refer to memory to figure out what's going on because I have a picture. So with this kind of connector, usually you just need pliers uh, I don't know where the pliers are. That's awesome. All right. Oh. Be very careful when you're working with air conditioners not to break these things. Because in here is the refrigerant for the air conditioner. Really not good for the environment at all. This should be a decent position for the soft start, which means this existing hole would be okay, but the hole that was before would. So I'm gonna have to make a new hole, just basically enlarge this hole and put the compressor wires through here and then back into the compressor and then we can keep plugging along. So let's get on that. All right, of course I didn't have a large enough drill bit because such is life. So I had that to get creative and ended up with this beautiful elliptical hole there. Look at that beauty. Now, you really don't want to just put your wires through sheet metal like that. You're just asking for them to get cut, which is why they had this nice little protective ring here. Can't fit that into this hole, obviously, and I don't want to keep drilling here and end up risking hitting the capillary tube. That would be a very expensive fix. So rather than do that, what I'm going to do is tape this up nicely so that the wires are nice and protected. And then the area of the wires that are actually going through this, I'm also going to tape up a little bit more. That way it's basically doubly protected here. Always have electrical tape in your RV. So let's do this. What we want to achieve here, the nice protected surface to essentially negate the sharpness of the sheet metal sheet metal is very very sharp and in fact if you have to do anything of the sort that i'm doing here you need to be very careful because you're playing with razor blades at this point so this is the makeshift edge protector for the wires and i'm also going to create a little sheath Okay, so now let's have a close look at what we've done here. So 
we had that hole there for the compressor wires that wasn't going to work with where i wanted to put the soft start so i moved it here you can see that i created the sheath in addition i have the edge protector that i also made with electrical tape so now it's tape versus tape a lot safer for the wire and then i'm going to tape the wire to the sheet metal and that will reduce the amount of motion that's relative between the two that should keep the wire a lot healthier in the long run. All right, so now I have this taped up completely. I don't think I'm gonna have any problems with wire damage here. I'm gonna follow the picture that I took earlier so I can reconnect the compressor wires to the compressor. Okay, so for those of you watching, now we're finally getting to the part that actually is relevant to you. I had to deal with all that problem just to get enough space for the soft start to fit in here and be far enough from the motor. Most of you are not gonna have that problem. Now, we need to figure out how to get these wires through to the electrical box. I need to drill another hole. It's great, guys. Gonna have to do some improvising, as of course is tradition around here. Back to taping. Is it this fun? take a picture of the wiring in the compressor. Should there be a problem with this installation, I'll have a picture of how everything was wired, which I can refer back to later, to reinstall things if they need to be reinstalled. The moment now to install the soft start where I want it to go. I heard recently that you don't want this side to be facing upwards because you can get water in through here. Ideally, I would have some alcohol, but since I don't have that, I'm using some high alcohol hand sanitizer here. And here we go. Moment of truth. All right, so there you go. Now we have the wires taped up together with the compressor wires in the way that I actually like. We got them set aside here and staying away from the motor. Remember these axles here will move, so you don't want to get them tangled there. So now they're flying over here and into the electric box so we can actually get started with the electric box wire. Okay, now the fun actually begins. So first point of the instructions here is to find the white wire from the compressor. So that will be this guy here. And find where it connects to the run cap, which would be right here. So this is a female connector. And what's going to happen is the blue wire from the soft start this guy is going to take a male connector and they're going to connect to each other. So let's get started with that. So as you can see, female style um, spade connector. You need a male connector for the blue one. Now soft start black is going to connect to where the white wire from the compressor used to be right there. Okay, now if you haven't worked with electricity before, most important things are, one, shut everything off before you start, but two, be very, very methodical because you can connect something wrong and you're going to fry everything and you're looking at a new compressor or something like that, it's not going to be fun. Now, red compressor goes to the Herm terminal. You're not supposed to disconnect the red compressor. So red compressor to cap. If you have a second red wire next to where the compressor wire connects, you're supposed to shut it off. We have the red compressor wire coming in from way over there in the boonies. And it does in fact connect next to a red wire. And that other red wire is going to the PTCR. You actually are supposed to disconnect the PTCR from the main cap. So that's what we're gonna do. 
So the TCR now is disconnected, and what I'm going to do is tape this up. Okay, now that we have that disconnected, that frees up a connector on the capacitor. That connector is where the yellow is going to go. I didn't read the instructions well enough, and I routed soft start red and soft start brown into the electrical box. I was not supposed to do that. Easy fix. Oh, right. And we're back to the compressor side of the AC. And now what we're going to do is remove the cap so we can install the brown and red wires. Okay, we got to the final stages here and I think there might be a typo in the instructions because it says to disconnect the black compressor wire. But if you look at the diagram, it suggests that actually this wire, red soft start, supposed to connect to the blue compressor wire as opposed to the black compressor wire. For now I'm going to connect the way that the diagram looks as opposed to what the instructions are saying because I do suspect there's a, a typo in the instructions there. All right so turned on the AC, we got the green light, I have to shut off the AC so no more green light but there we go. Soft start installed. 